Well, provoking thought, sparking dialogue, and teaching history. That's what we set out to accomplish with our initiative, 400 Years, The Vestiges of Slavery in Cleveland. Tonight we wrap up our month-long series with some final images and last words from difference makers right here in Northeast Ohio. During Black History Month, you've been watching our series on 400 years of vestiges of slavery in Cleveland. We've sat down with educators, law enforcement, clergy, journalists, social workers, and students to talk about these important issues, including race, education, trauma, policing, and spirituality. The question now is, where do we go from here? Let's hear about our hopes for the future. What's my hope? That's a good question. My hope for Black America is that we take, we understand the importance of reinvesting our youth and teaching entrepreneurship, giving them those hands-on skills to be able to take ownership and control of their own destiny. My hope is that Black America will, we will experience peace, a sense of hope and optimism, and also a place where we can safely express identities. Uh, we have to realize that we are a special people, and, uh, and one of the things that we can do in the midst of a lot of that's going on with us today is to change our mindset. My hope for black America is to continue to realize how beautiful and powerful we are. My hope for black America is that we recognize who we are, and uh, we, um, we let the mental shackles of slavery off of us, and we strive for economic independence. My hope is a black America where we all thrive. Um, truly where the color of your skin or um, your socioeconomic status, the neighborhood you're born into doesn't dictate what your destiny is. My hope for black America is that the black church, the African American church, will always be the prophetic voice. A prophetic simply meaning uh, a tradition that is concerned about uh, the vulnerable. My hope for black America is that black America will recognize that it is a gift from God, uh, that our community, uh, we are not three-fifths of a person, that we never forget who we are, and that the black church would sustain what uh, Dr. King and many others uh, tried to stop. So there's hope for the future, because they are going to be in the majority in the future. We have to pray that they don't want to treat us the way we have treated them. We've survived. We've survived from tremendous odds. And that in and of itself gives me hope that we will be successful. My hope for us would be how are we using our creativity, our ingenuity, our resources to build up the black community because we have, I think, everything that we need. My hope is that our young people can have lives in which they can, they can dream and that roadblocks won't be put in their way. I'm excited because I see future student government association presidents. I see presidents of colleges and universities. I see me. It's about legacy and I think it's going to start with somebody like me and someone else who look like me and we're going to just keep continue to build every single day. We will not succumb to the stereotypes and the rhetoric um, that we are unable to do, that we are less than. If we just change our mindset and learn to love ourselves for who we are and get that in our mind, that is going to take us far. My hope for black America is that we will engage our children in education for liberation and not just education for the perpetuation of the status quo. That in short, though inadequate, is my hope. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the hope and the dream of the slave, and so I rise, I rise, I rise. 
It has been so powerful. Very. Uh, so inspirational and so educational to watch all of this. And the common here, we th the theme we hear, elevation, overcoming, and striving to be better and being the change. Very motivational. A lot of people here put in a lot of hard work and yeah. time making these pieces the way they did. Tonight, we've got a special screening of our Black History Month series. That's right. See you in Yorker at Caramu House to preview the event that starts. See ya in less than an hour. That's right, Chris and Aaron, less than an hour, this place will be packed here at Caramu House, the oldest African-American theater in the country. And what a better place uh, to have this here, this screening and this town hall where we bring together people from all parts of the community to talk about our piece uh, that touched on race, inequality, justice, uh, and, and solutions. And so tonight at 7, we will screen that multi part series. There were many parts that we aired throughout the month of February. And then we will have a panel discussion uh, led by our very own Harry Boomer, uh, who will talk uh, with uh, lawyers and educators, social workers and everyday people uh, just about some of the things that you saw in our reports. And so we're very excited to host this and we hope that you will all be watching. So for now, I'm reporting here at Caramu House, Sia New Yorker, 19 News. Yeah, and you know what? Sia was the spearhead of this, one of the spearheads. She's not getting away without being lauded for her efforts. My goodness. Uh, if you can't make it tonight, you can always watch. We're going to put this out there for you so you can um, join in. You can watch on our website, our social media platforms. It all gets going at 7. You can get involved, too. You can submit questions via Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or Instagram.